Hi, this is Dr. Shri Devi bringing you the principles of brain chemistry as our second topic. In this topic, you'll be learning about what are the principles of brain chemistry in detail. Let's begin our topic, the principles of green chemistry. The green chemical approach is governed by 12 principles given by Anastas. These principles are important in combating against environmental pollution and for the betterment of human health. Let's see what is the first principle. First principle talks about the prevention of waste. It says that it is better to prevent the waste than to treat or clean up the waste after it is formed. Principle number two. It talks about the atom economy. That means it says that synthetic methods should be designed to maximize the incorporation of all the materials used in the chemical process into the final products. It also says that we have to go for minimum usage of the reactant and if the reactants are used, they should be completely utilized to give the final product. Principle 3. It talks about less hazardous chemical synthesis. It says, whenever practicable, synthetic methodologies should be designed to use and generate substances that possess little or no toxicity to the human health and to the environment. Principle 4. It talks about designing the safer chemicals. It says, Chemical products should be designed to preserve the efficacy or function while reducing the toxicity. Principle 5. It talks about safer solvents and auxiliaries. The use of auxiliary substances such as solvents, separation agents, etc. should be made unnecessary whenever possible and also innocuous when used. Principle 6. It talks about design for energy efficacy. Energy requirements should be recognized for their environmental and economic impacts and should be minimized. Synthetic methods should be conducted at ambient temperature and pressure. Principle 7. It tells about the use of renewable feedstocks. A raw material feedstock should be renewable rather than depleting whenever technically and economically practicable. Principle 8 talks about unnecessary derivatization. Unnecessary derivatization that is nothing but using the blocking group, protection, deprotection, temporary modification of physical chemical properties etc. should be avoided whenever possible. Principle 9 says about catalysis. Catalytic reagents as selective as possible are superior to stoichiometric reagents. So better go for catalytic reagents to make the reaction time shorter and utilization of chemical solvents can be decreased by using catalysis process. Principle 10 talks about design for degradation. Chemical products should be designed so that at the end of their function they do not persist in the environment and break down into innocuous degradation products. Principle 11 talks about the real-time analysis for pollution prevention. Analytical methodologies need to be further developed to allow for real-time in-process monitoring and control prior to the formation of hazardous substances. The last principle, principle 12, talks about inherently safer chemistry for accident prevention. It says that substances and the forms of substances used in the chemical reaction should be chosen so as to minimize the potential of chemical accidents including the release, explosions and fires. As a whole, the efforts are being made to fulfill all the 12 conditions to make a chemical process perfectly green. But it is not always practicable to satisfy all the requirements of 12 principles of green chemistry. 
Therefore, a chemical process is better defined as greener than the other chemical processes which fulfills more conditions and further researches may make it still greener and this process will go on. Here we come to the end of our topic principles of green chemistry. Thank you for your patient listening.